Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori. And today we're gonna do some keto gluten-free baking. Um, am I gluten-free? No. Yes. Okay, more importantly, am I gluten intolerant? Do I have celiac disease? No. I eat a ketogenic lifestyle, which by definition is gluten-free. So we're gonna make uh, almond cake and then to go on top, a caramel sauce. Easter's coming, I thought I'd make something fun, a nice recipe, let's not look at the crazy hair. I just got done working all day and I thought this would be delicious. So, the first thing we're gonna make is the caramel sauce, cause that's gotta cook for a little bit and then we're gonna put together the almond cake that I will give you, I was watching some gluten-free recipes and I adapted it to be keto. Um, except for the caramel sauce came from cooking keto with Christy. She's always linked below because I get a lot of recipe ideas from her website and videos and I belong to her group and blah, blah, blah. So let's make some keto sugar-free caramel sauce. All right. This is a pretty easy recipe. Um, it takes a little bit of time to pull it together because it has to cook for, you know, to make caramel, it's gonna cook for about anywhere from 12 to 15 minutes, depending on how thick you want it. The thicker you want it, the longer you cook it. But the recipe is a half a stick of butter, a half a cup of heavy cream. It makes about one cup, but it goes a long way, so keep that in mind. Now, a half a cup of sweetener of your choice. I use Lakanto monk fruit and erythritol blend. That is my preferred sweetener. Here's the thing with that. It's fine while it's warm, but when it cools down, like if you put it in the fridge and you wanna eat it cold, it gets granular. The erythritol kind of granulate, granulates, granulizes, granulate, yeah, it gets granny again, <laughs> um, and, but if you heat it up, that granule taste goes away, so you, this, with this sweetener that I'm using, you really just have to go, um, you need it to go warm, now, Christy, with Cooking Keto with Christy, uses something called allulose, I have not bought that yet, I need to try it, but allulose, and then she uses xylitol, which are two natural sweeteners. I don't use xylitol in my house as toxic to animals, and I just never know what my cat's or my niece's dog are gonna get into. So I don't bring or xylitol in my house. She said you could use all allulose, uh, but I don't have any, and you know where we're at now. I have my monk fruit sweetener, and that's what I'm gonna use. And I will just know that this has to be served warm, which is fine, that's how I prefer it. So that'll go, go, go until it gets brown and bubbly, and I'll show you along the way. Then, at the very end, you don't wanna do this until it's done, you stir in a quarter of a teaspoon of vanilla, and I have silver cloud maple, but a quarter of a teaspoon of maple flavoring as well. That just helps it taste more caramely. I have made a version of this before, it's delicious. Um, so everything just has to kind of melt. I run it on about a medium, I don't want to scorch anything. And I just kind of let it go. You don't have to stir it constantly, but you want to stir it often. So while this is kind of doing its thing, we're gonna pull together um, the almond cake that we're gonna make to go with this. All right, I'm turning it off, and I'm gonna add this vanilla. Oh, and maple. Guys, that smells divine. So now I'm just gonna take it off the heat. Look at it. I'm gonna take it off the heat and just let it sit and come to temperature. And I'll be back when the cake is done. Now, friends, we're gonna make the, it's. The recipe I got off, sort of off of YouTube, is almond cake. The original recipe was eggs and sweetener, all almond flour, and it was real sugar, almond flour, and then vanilla, and whipping your egg whites. I've ketofied it, um, 
to be two egg yolks. I have about a little, a heaping half cup, quarter cup of, of my sweetener in here. I'm gonna cream that. And then we're gonna add this, which is a quarter of a cup of isopure, unflavored whey protein, and it's no carbs. This is a quarter of a cup of oat fiber, not oat flour, oat, sorry, I was wiping over here, oat fiber. I get it on Amazon and it's zero carbs. And then a quarter of a cup of the almond flour. I'm just cutting out as many carbs as I can in here. And that's the biggest place it's going to be. I'm still stirring my caramel back here. Oh, here, I'll show you what it looks like. And it's just bubbling away. So let me whip this up. And it's going to be light and creamy. Okay, there's the light and airy egg yolk and sugar mixture. Now I need to rinse my beater. If there's any fat on your beaters, your egg whites will not whip. And same thing with like your container. You want it to be all nice and clean. I did put my eggs at room temperature. They will whip up better at room temperature. Stirring the caramel back here. Um, and this is just the two egg yolks or whites that I had left from the two egg yolks. And then you just whip them until they're stiff peaks. Now we have stiff peaks. The rest of this we're going to mix by hand. Oh, and did I mention in the caramel sauce, Christy says to use unsalted butter, and she adds salt, but I don't have unsalted butter, and obviously I'm not going out for it, so if it's a little salty, it's going to be salted caramel. We'll just call it. All right, so my egg whites, nice and stiff. I mean, you can turn them over and they don't fall out of the bowl. That's a good egg white. But first, we're going to combine all of these. Now, because oat fiber is pretty thirsty, it's called a thirsty grain or flour, um, I'm gonna add some cream once I get this mixed together. Even if you just use almond flour, like you may need to add more liquid to this. It just depends. But I know for a fact that oat fiber is gonna get in here and kinda suck up all of the liquid in the eggs, which is fine, we'll just add. A little cream at a time. I can't tell you how much because really it depends on the products that you're using. But that's okay. I mean, I'll show you what the consistency needs to look like. Like, And then you want to kind of go slow at this point and let the oat fiber drink up what it will drink up. I'm going to say this is a good three tablespoons that I'm going to use, maybe even up to a quarter of a cup. Um, you want it to be like a thick cake batter. And this is more like a dough still. So we'll loosen it up a little bit. And you just keep adding a little bit at a time. I think that'll be enough for me. Let's stir back here. Guys, I can't wait for this caramel. It freezes. Well, she says, um, if you want to make a larger batch, I mean, I know we're all kind of, I just splattered myself. We're all at home. I'm trying very hard not to be gaining any weight, which I have lost a couple pounds, so that's good. All right, I think that is good consistency of the batter. So it's kind of like a thick pancake batter, but we're gonna add all the egg white to this um, in little stages. Still stirring back here. And I have this down lo below medium now that it's come to the boil. All right, so let's just grab a little bit of egg white. And if you don't know how to fold, it's just light. You go down to the middle, you move it. You're just trying to incorporate as best you can without taking you know, all the air out of the egg whites. Let you beat in there. The first incorporation is the, you know, it's gonna lighten everything up. Moving forward, you should be good. 
better. There you go. And see, it's getting lighter already in color and texture. And then we're going to take another batch of this. And by the way, if you wanted to make meringues, this is how you do it. You beat the egg whites, add a little sweetener to them. You can add some tartar, which helps stabilize it. And a little sweetener, maybe some flavoring, and you bake them on a really low oven. But then you would have egg yolks left. I don't have egg yolks left because everything of mine is in this recipe. It just goes in in different phases. And then here in a second, I guess I could do it right now, we're going to add the vanilla in a little bit mm, of that almond extract. I'm using some almond because I'm not using a full three quarters of a cup of the almonds themselves. And that's just carb saving for me, so I add a little extract to it to kind of beef up the almond flavor. And then one of the recipes I saw when before they baked it, sprinkled almonds, sliced almonds on top. But again, that doesn't, it just adds to the carb count for me and I don't think it brings that much to the table. Texture wise, because I'm gonna have caramel sauce anyway. You do you. If you want almonds on top, I think it would be delicious, but there's just carbs I don't need. I always have to decide, you know, make up, what I want to do. Now this is going to cook on at 350. It said 25 to 35 minutes, but I don't know. We'll watch it. I took a pan. This is an 8 by 8 pan. I lined it with some parchment. I sprayed it with some cooking spray. Lined it with some parchment. And now we're going to put the cake batter in and put it in the oven. I'm going to start this at 20 minutes. And we're going to see how it does and if it's brown on top. But again, just like kind of everything else in the baking world, your ingredients, your oven, everything is going to kind of determine how long it takes to cook. Now, I'm living alone, so I'm using my finger. And my hands are clean, so I would use my finger anyway. Now, they did say you kind of want to... Just drop it and pop out the air bubbles or some of the air bubbles and I'm going to stick it in the 350 degree oven and our caramel guys is almost ready look how dark and delicious this looks can you see it there we go I'm gonna let it go a little longer the longer you go the thicker it will be when it sets up um, and also I feel like it's going to taste more nutty because your butter is cooking a little longer and then remember I have my vanilla back here with my maple extract that needs to go in there but like I said that's the last thing I'm going to do you don't want to cook out the flavor so this is just going to go for maybe another minute or two because I think that's a nice dark color what do you think? And then we'll add the essences here. Oh, that looks divine. And just imagine this drizzled on top of some of the almond cake. <laughs> Yummy. So give me a minute. I'm going to put everything away. Then we'll put in the vanilla. I pulled it out of the oven. Mine took about 23 minutes. Now it is very thin which is okay. But look at the air in it. I think it looks delish. And my caramel sauce looks amazing as well. We're just gonna do a little bit because I wanna try it with and without. But that is what it looks like. It smells delish. Let's taste it. Okay, you guys are going to try this with me for the first time. I've never had it either. I just watched a video today and decided to make it. It feels very moist. And look at the aeration from the uh, 
That's good. Next time I think I'll add some butter. And I think a tablespoon of vanilla was too much. I think your recipe meant to say a teaspoon. So I'm not getting the almond. Oh, it's delicious. So oat fiber is dry. Um, which is fine. Now how about a little bit of the caramel sauce? Mmm, that's good. Yeah, that's delicious. But I don't think it needs it. I think this is good all on its own. And I think this would be fantastic with some butter on it in the morning. Tender. It's good. I like it. Next time, less, uh, less vanilla. Maybe a little more almond. Yeah. And if I use the oat fiber, I'll put a little melted butter in it. But other than that, it's, oh, I'm sorry, buddy. Did you want to say hi? Oh. Somebody thinks I'm making coffee and he wants his cream. It's no, there's not. You say hi. No, you say hi. Okay, okay. Okie dokie. He's feeling much better, by the way. And that is it. And I hope you enjoy. And if you need an Easter treat, I highly recommend. Okay, buddy. Have a good one, guys. Night.